I got you. It doesn't matter though. We got the second hook coming out. They're gonna jump in on me. Oh, the PP. RLS, like that's the the is... going in. That was a huge petrifying gaze. Managed to catch two members of RLS. That is a lot of damage coming out. The Aphelios is just in the back. He peppered on them all. He's getting a lot of shuriken damage out as well. Just look at him shredding through those health bars. That is a triple kill going over to RLS escape. And petrifying gaze is... stops anti's initial engage, but the damage is just so insane, and they are able to take down two members of Trickle Down Economics. That is gonna be it absolutely pressuring them right off of this. Escape is now just trying to do his the opposite of his namesake. Dive in on them, making sure they have nowhere to go. They have no escapes. And this is just RLS picking them off one by one. Leaves picking each other off in this top part of the jungle. That is going to be the hook coming up from U2, trying to find Mizuza. Mizuza is full health, though. RLS has no health bars. They really need to back this up because if you get a good volley off, it's going to be the rest of your team is dead. That's it. Look at that. Mizuza picks him off. That is going to be three members of RLS already brought down. There is very little they can do at this point. Escape's trying to find a target. The Infernum is doing as much damage as it can. Petrifying Gaze is going to come out, though, and that's going to be the burst. That is essentially going to be it. Oh, we that do... lands onto a squishy member. As long as it's not hitting... Oh, oh. the flash oh. is going to come out. That's going to be pulling into the J4. We've got that Elder Burf about to get the burst. There's Execute number one. Execute number two. We see that the rest of the members of RLS are just going to get picked off one by one right now. Hello, folks. Welcome back. It's game number four. I am your friendly neighborhood shoutcaster, Sharagan, joined once again by a friend or foe royalty, Joshi. Hello. This is going to be an exciting game. This is. We got Universal Basic Income and Pandas with Hats. I feel like there's a lot of hats going on between both of their logos. They are placed on very different ends of their animals, but the end point is still the same. As we start going through this, I am expecting a very different game. Uh, between UB and PWH, as we just saw from uh, RLS versus TDE. I'm not expecting this one to be quite as long, but as soon as I say that, I feel like I'm going to jinx it because it's still a UB game. It, it is still a UB game. They do like going for seven Drakes altogether. I feel like they're doing that deliberately. Uh, <laughs> like they're just dragging the games out as long as possible to make sure all seven of them come out. Uh, what do you think of UB's performance lately? Because it just it definitely feels like that we've been kind of feeling the absence of uh, their Brian Sang and Freelancer. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's definitely pretty stark, uh, the way that they've been playing, because they aren't able to rely on just kind of winning their lanes this time as they did before, right? Uh, we see that Red and Freelancer play fairly similarly to what we were seeing with uh, their previous incarnation, but Brian, Brian Sang has been the best support in any FOF uh, heroic team these for the entirety of FOF as far as I can tell like that guy was so good and build a pony is not a bad support but to put him up into the shoes of Brian who in real life is like four feet tall and ask him to fill these giant clown shoes is not a task that he's been up to it, it, exactly and I feel honestly like that's kind of how friend or foe could be described just kind of across the board is nobody's really bad it's just everyone is so good that some of these really good players <laughs> look bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brian in chat, I see he is complaining that he is not four foot, he is in fact five foot two, but you know, there's a certain level at which you kind of start asking, he's like, what's the difference anyway? It's like, does it really matter? Uh, <laughs> as, a, as a six foot two uh, tall, bald, bearded man, I say. Uh, yep, so yep. one thing I do want to point out real quickly, like, cause we actually got to talk about this game here. Uh, on the side of UB, they have once again picked up the Ash Janna Zach combo, which we have seen them pull out on multiple occasions. And it has been pretty hard to deal with as a team. So my yep. question is, why did Pandas let that through? Uh, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of bands that you got to be aware of when you're trying to play up against Yumi or Yubi, and you just have to be ready to go with whatever style it is that you want to play, right? Yubi is a team that has enough champions in every role that you can't actually ban away all the things that you would like to. You are going to have to allow them to play one of the styles that they have shown that they can play in the past, and this time, it is a very redundant engage style of draft coming through from Yubi, and it says to me that PWH thinks that they can win off of laning phase alone. They've already picked a very strong bottom lane, Lucian Nami, right? This should be able to beat Ash Janna just off of the kind of raw damage they put out. Mordekaiser is very strong into most of Red's champion pool. It becomes very difficult for Red to win that, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're saving their last pick for the mid lane in order to try and allow Hubes to just beat up Civil Lock in the mid. And if you can do that, it should be enough to beat Yubi. The problem is, for six of the teams that have played against them, it hasn't been. Mm-hmm. 
Definitely. And it's like we only just saw them lose one game uh, the other day. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I think I remember last time that happened to I, I can't remember if it was Yubi, but they kind of went on a downward spiral for a little bit and started losing game after game. Uh, if I remember correctly, back when they first started. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we'll see a repeat of that. I kind of doubt it just because it's Yubi and they have very good at playing under pressure. Um, I do like these bands coming out here, getting rid of the Vagar, getting rid of the Corky, because we have seen both of those come out on the side of Pandas with Hats and be absolutely devastating. A yeah. very quick lock-in of the Victor and Trundle, though, means that we Yumi knows exactly what they want. Yeah, this definitely looks like Yubi got what they were going for uh, with how quickly they were able or willing to lock it in. And I feel like PWH are in a spot where they have to kind of answer. They need to kind of win quickly as they're trying to go through this because Zach, one of Utility Monster's best characters is a scaling monster, right? This champion is actually really, really tough to deal with later on in the game because he is so tanky. He gets so much HP back over the course of different fights. And PWH don't kill him particularly quickly, especially with the way that Azir has been building these days. He's not going with a lot of sustained DPS. Even with the Nashers, he's going to struggle to try and take on the Zac. Yeah, I was seeing that uh, Azir pick up immediately made me think that that's just a, a complex champ that you don't necessarily want to take into this universal basic income uh team because like you've got too much little micromanaging stuff you're gonna have to do and you're gonna have to hit things perfectly you're gonna have to hit that uh sharima shuffle just right otherwise it's not gonna be able to do its job yeah um one thing i expect panda to do and if they don't i will be very upset is build healing reduction hmm? you got a zach you got a trundle and you got a jam yep. Yep. build healing reduction Gotta do it. Should be coming out from Subarashi. Uh, Subarashi's actually been one of the players of PWH that I've been more impressed with so far. Uh, Subarashi and Hubes have been the players that I've been like, you know, these guys are actually pretty decent. Um, the thing that we're going to have to pay attention to, though, this game is that they're not going to be in control of a lot of the game. It's really going to be on Voltaic Penguin, a player who has been kind of struggling to maintain his positioning as a strong AD carry with so many strong AD carries in the league. It is going to be really on penguin to try and find enough pressure to put yubi on the back foot because he is the a very short range ad carry he's going to struggle to try and actually hit ash and victor he really is and it's going to be interesting to see exactly how that ends up playing out uh i noticed you didn't mention uh dr schmeckles in that that comment so how, how do you feel about some of fof who's been saying that he is the number one top laner that, well, that is an opinion to have. Um, Schmeckles has been outperforming his rank for sure. Um, and I think that's probably because he hasn't played enough uh, ranked games to really get his rank to match his MMR. I realistically think that this guy is a pretty decent top laner in the entire league. Uh, but the thing is, I feel like he has taped off a lot of his minimap because he doesn't respond to ganks particularly well. And when he's isolated 1v1, he looks good. Yeah, look at that. It's not going to be a kill, but that is a nice bit of damage uh, to get off a trade. It... These early trades always kind of make me go, you know, I wonder why you're doing it, because it's not going to make that big of a difference. Mm -hmm. It just makes you back and have to walk back to lane, but you're there by the time minions get there anyway, so yeah, the moot point. Yeah. I mean, it is worth noting that Civilock has started with the Death Laser uh, in order to try and contest the range of Hubes early on, so I do like that small adaptation. But this is a team on uh, Yubi, who I've also been playing with these guys for quite a long time, in particular Utility Monster, Civilock, and Jeff God Gamer, and they are at a point of the game where Civilock and Utility Monster think about the game very similarly, and it allows them to play in a way that is very self-synergistic, even if it is contrary to the way a lot of teams feel like you should be playing League of Legends. Because they're so good at the style that they've developed, it's very difficult for a lot of teams to punish them. Mm, that makes total sense. You're just yeah. on that same wavelength, so therefore you don't even have to think about what you're doing. Um, I, I do expect it. I, I kind of always think it's funny to see Jeff God on a champion like Ash. It's just it's it's not quite the flashy ADC that you expect, uh, and yet he's still he's going to end up piloting this champion very very well as the game progresses. Yeah, I really hope he doesn't go with the Imperial Mandate again, uh, like we saw previously. It it was a composition that they had played, but this is the big thing that we're going to see from Jeff God and Build a Pony. Like their laning is still pretty darn good, and as long as they can push around uh, Penguin and Superashi, it makes the rest of the game very easy. Mm -hmm. I like this trade back and forth. The exhaust is going to come out, though. We do see Jeff God able to get a lot of damage onto Super Rashi. Uh, not enough to get the kill off, but that is going to be them brought very, very low. UB winning that trade gets them in a really nice advantage. The wave is pushing underneath 
uh, Voltaic's turret, though, so they will be needing to uh, watch out for that. Yeah. Xin Zhao oh. looking for that angle. We do see that he's going in on this. It's going to be the flash coming out from Build a Pony. Nice volley in order to stop the engage. Uh, but that is, I, I think, think that I can is going to be okay with that. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely worthwhile. You get the flash out of Jen, which means you have a point of attack next time you come down to this lane. But one of the things that I kind of want to talk about is, um, again, referring back to the article where I established like the five pillars of how you can kind of look at these players and evaluate how strong they are. Jeff has some of the best target selection and best threat assessment in the entire game. In that last trade that he had, he got as much damage as he possibly cut off without taking anything back because he knew that Penguin presented no threat. When Lucian has all of his skills down, he's not going to be out DPSing an Ash at this point in the game. Mm -mm, not quite yet. He's got. He's so gated behind those cooldowns that really, like, he kind of early on blows that load really, really early. Uh, and then we've got up here in the top lane, Utility Monster getting that Scuttle Crab, getting oh. himself some nice priority. Uh, I Zhao. do. I like that Xin Zhao flank. Like that coming up behind. He's probably going to be looking to walk just straight into ooh, this is gonna get really spicy here in a second yep. uh, i don't know they do notice it build a pony has no flash that means he's gonna get cut out the heel's gonna come out as well the flash though does mean that first blood goes over to xin Zhao, and we see that think that i can picking up that early gold lead uh is gonna put pandas with hats on the board yeah, I really like that play coming through. It is Think That I Can trying to find an opportunity to get his bottom lane ahead. And I love the target selection too, right? You're not likely to kill the Ash. He still has the flash available. Whoop, nice jump in onto this Dr. Schmeckles. We do see the nice pull in, knock up. Dr. Schmeckles being brought very, very low. The Ignite is going to come out. That is something I we didn't mention earlier. Trundle does not have TP. So he doesn't quite have as much lane presence as this Dr. Schmeckles is going to as the game progresses. We'll see how well Dr. Schmeckles is actually able to abuse that. He hasn't actually been super effective in a lot of the side laning that we've been seeing so far. And Red has. Red is pretty good at making sure that he also has pushing waves like we were praising RLS for earlier. And now that uh, Red has a pretty large lead and also has the flash available, it puts Dr. Schmeckles in a really awkward position the next time they actually return to lane. Red is one of our better laners, and when he's playing a champion like this, that is mechanically simple and you don't have to focus on making sure you push the right buttons you can just pick the right fights and red is better at that than dr schmeckles is mm -hmm. and unfortunately i can't we can't aren't looking at the top lane so i can't really see it uh i don't think he's pushing that wave as hard as he can uh i do like xin Zhao. we got things that i can pressuring this drake picking that up that early ocean drake it's going to be very very useful at 20 minutes he does have to back off a little bit he's not quite able to solo it uh but this early drake does mean that it's going to go over for the side of Pandas with hats. And then looking at these two teams, again, I'm kind of cheating because we've got the uh, the second Drake up. I'm going to stick with my prediction this time, though, as an Infernal Drake. All right. I'm going to go Hextech for no real reason. No real reason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, realistically, there's a lot of opportunities for both teams to focus on this. And this is something that uh, UB do rather consistently, right? Uh, there's been a long conversation in League of Legends where you give up the first two dragons for about a 3,000 gold lead, and Yubi are honestly happy to do it with a no 1,000 gold lead. They're happy to do it and just remain even otherwise in the game because they're so much better at setting up later dragons than other teams that it's impossible for other teams to find good fights around these. And so the fact that Yubi is currently even, at least in my mind, says that they're winning. It, it says that they're winning, although I feel like Jeff is missing a lot of CS right now. Yeah. I mean, he could be CSing oh, better, but... A little bit. Well, it's more yeah. of like just his, his timing on his auto attacks uh, during that particular wave uh, seemed a little off, but, you know, it happens. Yeah, yeah it happens, it happens. We, we, all, we all do that from time to time. I know that there are definitely games where I'm just saying, like, oh, I have forgotten how to CS this game, and I'm down... Like, what to what yeah. CS? How, how do I earn gold how in League of Legends? <laughs> yeah, I'm down hmm, a lot more waves than I should be for no reason. Oh, I got two minions out of the first two waves. Good to know. But look at this. We see Zach coming behind. Potentially, this is a tough 2v2 for them to take at the moment. It, it, it is a tough 2v2. I, I do like Utility Monster hanging out right here. I feel like he saw Think That I Can. He does have the level advantage. Uh, he sees Xin Zhao going over the wall. Oh, oh this is cheeky. This is sneaky, sneaky. Oh, nice. Jumping in right as he's in the middle of doing the buff. Does manage to get a nice bit of damage, knocking him up. The smite's going to come out early. We do see that Xin Zhao does actually manage to pick up the red buff. He does get the challenging smite. 
at the same time, Utility Monster is getting brought very low. Oh, he has to flash over the wall to avoid the Surima shuffle. Doesn't get knocked back by the mandate, oh. but he's going to get pulled into Dr. Smackles. Dr. Smackles is going to get the pop on to that passive, so he's going to be able to do a lot of damage to Zach. And Red is going to get himself caught out as he walks into three members of PWH. He's going to get taken down as well. Not enough damage coming out on the side of uh, PWH. PWH is able to get more kills, managing to almost take down Civilock. Civilock doesn't have the exploding laser, so he's not quite able to take down Dr. Schmeckles. I think at this point, he's just trying to run away, build out these timers, and hope for a execute at this point. Mm, I don't even know if he gets the execute off at this point. I think he has mm. bitten too nope. much off, more than he can chew. And the sad thing was, the reason why Civilock lost that was because he ulted too early. He thought that he could crush down the health bars of the members of PWH, but because Dr. Schmeckles ults him after, the Chaos Storm doesn't follow him into the Death Realm, and so there's suddenly there's no more damage left for Civilock to actually do, and it leaves Dr. Schmeckles alive. Holy shit! The electrocute damage that just almost obliterated Jeff God Gamer. That's, that's why you pick Lucian, not me, ladies and gentlemen. That is the entire point, and now we are seeing... That what we were saying, Voltaic Penguin and Superashi with this really strong landing advantage now find themselves in a pretty good position. Jeff God Gamer is further behind than I think he's been this entire season. And it looks like an opportunity where they can try and push things around. If this Lucian is far enough ahead and if Voltaic Penguin can play these aggressive AD carries, they can put this game on their back for the next couple of minutes, find themselves another dragon, and try and snowball from there. But Yubi. They have some monsters of their own. Look at how far ahead Red is, even with the kill going over to Dr. Schmeckles. I know, he's like, he's got that CS lead. So it's like, I was about to say earlier, like, like just a few seconds ago, how it feels like Red is just over pushing his lane and just keeps on shoving under tower, getting into a really bad position. But then when you look at his CS lead, he's getting all the CS he needs uh, in order to keep himself ahead. And so I feel like UB is once again, they're like, look, it's fine. We don't mind throwing the early game. Let them think they're mm -hmm. winning. Let them get big brained and then they'll just not realize how far ahead we actually are. We'll see what happens, right? It is still a very even game coming through for Yubi, and think that I can. He's spending a lot of time trying to look for these ganks. He hasn't done his raptors or wolves in a hot second, and so looking for all these ganks does mean that Utility Monster is going to be relatively strong later on, where Zinjo's clock is ticking. Oh. Zinjo again. Oh. I don't know if you noticed that uh, Utility Monster oh. accidentally took the blue buff. He was trying to give it to Civilock. <laughs> Hey, you know, I know Utility Monster well enough to know that he's done that kind of thing on purpose. In fact, he did it for Rex when we were in the semifinals against INT. But look at this big dive coming through. PWH trying to find a way in. Absolutely massive dive. You've got four members of PWH on the bot lane. I do this disengage. Absolutely fantastic. Build the pony getting a nice knock up the frozen zone, getting a lot of damage off as well. But unfortunately, that is just not enough. There's too much damage on the side of PWH. There is no safety at all in that situation. They were basically gone. Good plays coming through from Pens with Hats. This is not something I was really expecting from them earlier on. But Dr. Schmeckles finding Utility Monster. Does manage to find Utility Monster. Utility Monster does not currently have passive and is having to fight a Mordekaiser in the Death Realm. That is not where he wants to be. The Flash coming out to try huh. and get that Q to connect. Doesn't quite manage to do it. Red, though, is waiting on the other side. He starts beating him over the head with that club. Does manage to get the chop off. And that is going to be the Rift Herald going over to UB as Utility Monster almost went down. And look at that. The Inferno blazes. We've got an Infernal Soul on the board. Okay, but look at this. The members of PWH should be trying to fight this. Think that can has no ult. You think that can does have no ult. Civilock is trying to get some damage off, does manage to get a little bit. Unfortunately, they just aren't doing a lot of damage to this Rift Herald. They've decided to turn around, go for the Scuttle, do manage to pick it up, Smite coming out. It, I feel like they're waiting for Utility Monster's passive to come back. Like, that's, that's what I they're playing around. I don't feel like it's likely to come up in time, and I think they just need to get this up. The real winner of this whole sequence has really been Jeff God Gamer. He's had an opportunity to just farm for quite a while longer, and yeah, almost a full minute left on Utility Monster's passive, but Dr. Schmeckles... Well, Dr. Schmeckles not respecting the fact that Zack was just hanging out. The pillar's going to cause a lot of disruption right there. He's not able to get away. He's going to get ignited. He's taking a lot of damage so that the shield is not going to be able to heal him very much. And that is going to be Utility Monster, though, getting brought exceptionally low as we have Think That I Can joined by Subarashi in order to get those empowered auto attacks off. That was almost really good for Yubi, but turned around by Pandas with Hats. I feel like that's a lot of Yubi's early games, just kind of in general. Like, it was almost really good. They're trying to make it, but I'll take Penguin's going to yep. do a lot of damage here. I was just kidding. Just Step up! <laughs> Step up! What? what was that? Do some damage! 
I, I anyway. feel like, yeah, yeah, he didn't get the electrocute proc off. He just needed to get the double auto on. Yeah, I mean, you know, the electrocute's coming from Nami, so there's no way he gets that. But, you know, That's press true. the attack, the auto attacks, I mean, it's free damage, it's free real estate. Just gotta go for that. So this is a, a situation now where anybody in their right mind looking at this, if you had name tags off, or like, oh yeah, you know, I'm feeling pretty good for Pandas with Hats. They should be able to try and close this one out, but they haven't been watching FOF this entire season. This isn't even a large gold deficit for Yubi, and they've come back from much, much worse in red. Red is getting, again, that great pillar, great uh, attempted defensive claw coming out from Dr. Smuggles, but it's not going to be enough yep. as Red just beats him over the head with that club. Uh, it's, he's just a troll in that top lane. Yep. I mean, Red Red loves his trundle men. He's pretty good at it, and he's just willing to take a lot of these team fights. And that's kind of what we were saying. One of the things I've been very impressed at with Dr. Schmeckles is his ability to play as though the enemy jungler is never there. But when the enemy jungler isn't there anyway, and you're getting 1v1, it doesn't Ooh, get Ooh, look at that Nami tidal wave. He's going to get a nice bit of disruption, but we have a good disengage coming out from that tornado. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. I mean, we are seeing one of the things I really like about the UB composition, and something that I know Utility Monster and Civil Lock tend to spend a lot of time thinking about, is how well their backline moves together. And Jeff and Civil Lock have a lot of combined slows, they have a lot of combined area control, and they actually do quite a bit of damage when they're hiding alongside each other. Uh, and so that's a situation where as long as you can create enough space with your frontline with the Janna, they should be just fine to scale into this game. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, we were talking about that gold lead earlier. Just look at Trundle versus Mordekaiser. That is a massive lead on the side of red. Uh, and he's got that built Blade of the Rune King. He's got essentially that lane is very comfortable for him right now. Even into yep. the Death Realm. Look at this. Taking all that damage. No uh, man, he doesn't care. It, 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 no man, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Although. Oh, it doesn't matter. The, the, it might matter now because you got the rest of PWH looking to move up right here. Utility Monster getting himself caught out. He's going to do a jump over the wall. Nice use of the juke stick in order to yep. get away. Yeah. If Think That I Can was playing with like his big brain hands on, he would have been able to knock Zach back in. But that's one of the things that you can't really expect players to do. And anyway, what we are noticing is that look at this. The gold lead is about two, three thousand four pandas with hatch just a few moments ago now it's less than a thousand and with a dragon coming up very soon this is when we can expect yubi to come online they're at an item on a lot of their players civil if he gets his back off oh he doesn't Ooh, look at that i like it that is going to be a good job by hubes managing to get him as we poor civil Lock did not realize he was standing on a ward and that's really big. I was just about to say, Civil Lock's about to back for the Loons, and then once they get back on the map first, they should be in total control of this dragon, but this is a lot of pressure that we are already seeing from Pandas with the Hats, and now they might take away this blue buff. Yeah, he's gonna try, but unfortunately, Red is already there, so it's gonna be the nice smite coming out, and Red just kinda running, running the Death God down, just being like, look, you wanna keep this fight going? That's fine with me, I got a club for you." Huh. <laughs> We'll see if they can do anything further, but Pandas with Hats are doing a thing that Yubi normally does to other teams. They're the first ones to this dragon. They have control of these choke points. Now the big thing will be, if Yubi shows up, will Pandas with Hats actually defend it? Take a couple of fuel points. Yeah, we'll have to see here. Uh, we, I don't know oh, no. if we're going to see a lot of contestion coming out from the side of Yubi, because they, they really don't have the position for it. Yeah. I mean... Like, Again, this is something that UB is very commonly doing in their Clash games, in their Flex games. They will give up three dragons and say, you know, it's okay, we're going to fight on the next one. We're just going to flip it later on. But it becomes very dangerous, right? Because now you're starting to look at a lot of 50-50s, and we saw, going up against NWT, that Utility Monster is not the best smiter. That, that might be the case, although remember what I said earlier about how I feel like they deliberately go for seven drakes every game? <laughs> oh, please, no. <laughs> There's Another 40-minute like... game? Uh, exactly. So now they're like, look, it's fine. We'll just get the next four. We just, got all just four. Get four. Just get okay. the next four Drake. It's okay. It's okay. We can get, we can give them the soul and then we'll get three consecutive Elder Dragons back to back to back. It's okay. The game is still going to be going on that one. Don't worry about it. I, but yeah, I, this is a... <laughs> I don't like when you do that, Civilock. Walking up to an Azir. I know what I said earlier about how Azir is a little bit complex. You don't just walk up when he's got sand soldiers ready to jump on you. Yep. Oh, 
Red. Oh, Red going in on to Dr. Speckles. Dr. Speckles pulling him even closer. That is not where you want Trundle to be as Trundle just again beats him over the head. He's trying to like get it through your thick skull. I win these. <laughs> and I got I got bad news for Schmeckles. It doesn't really get better from this point on because both of these champions are just balls of stats and Red is a larger ball at this point and it doesn't doesn't change like yes you can eventually get uh, a bramble vest which cuts down on some of the healing but it doesn't change the fact that he's going to be doing so much damage to you this entire time so we do see at least one clear path back into the game and i say back in the game they're only down like 500 gold for the members of ub and that is red just ending it and that's something we know jaffe from uh I want to say BBZ, but now Baby used to do quite quite often. He used to create this huge sideline pressure while the rest of the map was just doing okay. But again, Yubi also team fight quite well, both as players and as champions. Yeah, know that the gold lead is only like like you said, it's only like 0.4k. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like it's so much more for the side of Yubi. I mean, you'd. You would think that, but this is also a situation where you should be recognizing you're up in farm a lot in a couple of lanes, and now they've got a can trying to find another flank. Yep, they are Holy looking stuff. for that flank. Utility Monster is ready for it. Both junglers on opposite sides. we got the oh. tidal wave coming out from Nami. Subarashi, though, isn't going to find anyone with either the bubble or the wave, so that means that that's a lot of damage right there. Nice arrow getting into the backline, but they're not going to be able to follow it up as we have the turret coming out from the uh, Shuriman uh, god right there. Uh, we do have the rest of the members you be trying to push up utility monster are not able to find that hook though yeah i mean we're seeing one of the big issues that the pwh composition is running into and that they have very little in the way of consistent engage right you either throw hubes in and he's one of your most fed members that needs to be doing damage throughout this entire fight or subrashi goes for these tidal waves and so when your opponents can just leave neither of those are particularly effective and they just walked away you'd be very good at taking a lot of these fights and we are seeing that with the gold even I mean, even uh, in a situation where they think they're behind, Yubi is going to go for this next fight anyway. Mm -hmm. They absolutely are. I, I, I love this. You see Dr. Smuggles being like, I'm going to fight this. No, wait, no, no, I'm not. That's a bad idea. Uh, then does manage to pull him closer to the tower. Death Realm does come out, but Red is far enough away. He's able to fight this away from the turret, and he's able to get a lot of damage. That zone just does so much for him. And that yep. is another kill going over to Red. That is four times he's taken this Mordekaiser down. And notice that Red was backing up at the beginning of it. Not because he didn't think he would win, but because he knew he needed to pull Schmeckles away from the turret. Right? Mm -hmm. As soon as Schmeckles gets too close to the turret, Yubi can't chase him any further. That's the kind of play that we need to see coming out from the members of Yubi. Red, very intelligently piloting this trundle so far, and he's putting himself in a position where he can be the primary carry for these upcoming team fights. but trundle doesn't team fight particularly well with this build. He's definitely built to split, and the rest of his team is not very strong. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's funny, I mentioned not having TP uh, would might be an issue for Red, but he's all already just all over the map. It doesn't matter. So I was like, you know what? Okay, I was wrong. Doesn't need TP in order to run. He's good. He's okay. <laughs> okay, now we're coming through, and this is one of the tests that we always pay attention to with Yubi. They get the waves pushing. They're going to take this turret, probably. Oh, choosing not to. But they're here first, to. and with this Nami wave gone, suddenly one of the major tools that PWH need to have for the upcoming fight is not there, and all the engage tools are now in the hands of Yubi. They are ready for this fight. It's really interesting because you see that there's that control ward right there, so there's no Blinking way. Red. Yep, there's no way for them to actually see this red coming up on the bottom side. We got a nice jump in. The Ash Arrow is going to nice. find Lucian as he dashes right into it. He gets eaten alive by the Zack. The gel man just absorbs him completely. In the meantime, Utility Monster is going in on the Subarashi. He gets himself some sushi out of that. And that is going to be a shutdown as Victor gets the kill on his ear. If you take a look at this replay once again, I want to point out how quickly and adeptly Jeff is actually switching. Because yes, we know Utility Monster and Red are going to absolutely smash or take Penguin. But Civil Lock and Jeff got Gamer find themselves in a really uncomfortable position sandwiched between two sides of the fight. And watch how Jeff got Gamer first off starts hitting the one target that can hit him but by kiting down away from Hubes, he moves himself in a position where the Azir can't actually do enough damage to him and allows him to even get a little bit of damage down on Lucian. So that's part of why Jeff is so good. His team fight sense is impeccable. He's always hitting the right targets and now they're even making a cool call where they don't need ever to do this dragon. They think they can do the Baron at the same time. And you see pandas with hats is actually pinging the question marks on those uh down there on the drake as though either they're not sure if they were taking the drake or not uh i do 
think this is a very bold is. play to go for ah, the Baron. I think it is. does this so quickly, man. This is true. Yeah. And once Zack comes in here and takes away the damage debuff that Trundle currently has, it's going to go down very, very quickly. There's no way that PWH get here in time. And this is the kind of thing that Yubi does, right? They find themselves down. Now they're suddenly up 4,000. After taking this Baron, they'll be up 5,500 gold. Just out of nowhere, because they take these team fights better. They get set up a lot better than other teams. And all their laning deficiencies aside, this is what makes Yubi so threatening, is they just have a better setup, a better macro than any other team in the league. And that, just like that, the even gold has suddenly turned into a 5k gold lead for the side of UB. Yeah. That is that is just absolutely terrifying. And look at the bounty now that is on that troll's head. It's a lot. It's so a lot. You, have to, you have to start asking yourself, like, how now, as PWH, do you start bringing this one back? And the answer He's is, Cubes needs to freaking go off. And that's about it. Mm-hmm. He's got to find that target, find that backline, get either a nice pick on the Ash or the Janna just so that okay. they lose a lot of that. I do like this. Red is going to get caught out of position. He's going to flash it, and he's going to have to just barely oh. avoid getting caught up by the bubble, but that's going to be knock up. Look how much health he's got, though. We got the Janna coming in. Monsoon's coming out. Means a lot of healing is going to be on their side. Think that I can. Getting brought exceptionally low. Blue T is going to get a double kill as we see the troll once again getting another chop. That is going to be two, three four kills already on the side of blue team and just they managed to finally pick up the last one that is going to be a quadra kill ace as we see that civil Luck has stolen the penta Oh, <laughs> uh, oh man clovis you know better than that you saw red even denied a penta from jeff earlier this season there's no reason to take it away from him there's a reason why red has been one of the big mvps this entire season for yubi he's constantly putting them in good positions but it's still the rest of the team that needs to execute and just as they were doing before they get the dragon fight multiple objectives and they're going to be finding the mid lane turret, they're going to be finding the bottom lane inhibitor, and they can probably cycle over and even go for one more if they want. But they also don't have to. They can back away and spend the 3,000 gold that is now separating the entire team. Uh, a slight misposition on that blast cone doesn't quite get everybody it's over okay. the wall. Yeah, it would have. It, it's kind of like that that moment in uh, a superhero film where it's like everybody lands on one side, but because Deadpool happens to be part of it, he lands on the wrong side. Yeah, you know, on his head and just kind of yep, like, yep. okay, give me, give me one second, let me, let me fix my neck, but... It's like, hold on, hold on. Yeah. We're good. Uh, yeah. So, at this point, I'm not entirely sure what Pandas with Hats is going to be able to do in order to get back into this game, because they are very much on the back foot. Uh, they've got to get a Wushu finger hold on somebody. It is tough. Um... To be entirely honest, I don't think there's a real way for Pendant with Hats to, under their own power, find a way back into this game. Uh, they're really going to rely on Yubi making some big mistakes. Now, that's not to say that Yubi can't do that. We saw that in their games up against NWT. They made some colossal mistakes that ended up putting them in a situation where they didn't win that game. Mm -hmm. But their track record says that usually they make the right decisions, and that puts mm -hmm. it in a very tough position. I still think if this game goes to... 40 50 minutes and Hubes has completed items he can basically win this game on his own but mm, yes. unfortunately the rest of the composition doesn't support him very well i completely agree um it's one of those things where i feel like with based on these team comps uh pandas with hats doesn't have the force mistakes out oh no, no Hubes getting caught no. by that crystal arrow does mean he's gonna get taken down almost instantaneously think that I can is going to get a nice bit of damage up on unfortunately he's going to get ripped to shreds as well super dash taken out that is going to be a fish finger fry and unfortunately that is going to be three members of PWH taken down in a matter of seconds and that is going to be the mid inhibitor falling here momentarily as well Ooh, look at this Dr. Speckles he's going to try to bend the tower not going to matter it's just going to get taken out underneath the cackling laugh is going to go off but that just indicates Mordekaiser's dead yeah, and it's going to be at least two more inhibitors going down. I feel like UB are in a position where they can try and end right here if they want to. The death timers are short, but you are so far ahead that you can even dive under these Nexus turrets. That said, that's not the UB way. They go back, they're going to make sure that they give no opportunities for their opponents to win, pick up another dragon on their way out, and from that position, now that all three inhibitors are down, wait for the Baron, pick that up, and then go dance in the enemy base. Enemy base. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so with that, uh, they, they looked at the scoreboard and they realized they don't have seven drakes on the board. So True, they only have four. Yet. What's the point? Yeah, exactly. We can't end yet. 
Well, we'll see. I know that that's something that they've been working on, is trying to close out games a little bit more cleanly. Picking up this uh, second Infernal Dragon means that they are going to be in a pretty good spot, and also mark you as being correct, because it was the Infernal Dragon. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I was anticipating the Infernal Soul is because of the amount of damage output that comes out from the side of Jeff God, uh, Voltaic Penguin, Xin Zhao, and uh, Trundle. Like, those were the, the four kind of champions. I was like, okay, because of those four, that's why it's going to be an Infernal Dragon. All right, all right. I mean, we'll we'll have to we'll, we'll just need to get more data, right, and more see data. how often you're correct. Exactly. And at some point, some somebody in Twitch chat, maybe this could be the next article of a uh, Jeff stats is how often is Jerry getting correct and predicting which soul it is actually going to be. But for now, Yubi take control of this top side. If PWH walk too far forward, they all die, mm -hmm. and it should be a very easy barren and end from this position from Yubi, pushing them up to uh, having only dropped a game to Yubi, excuse me, to NWT and Baby so mm -hmm. far this season. So far, and honestly, uh, oh, they that, beat Baby, didn't they? They beat Baby, they beat Baby. It was okay, NWT okay. that managed to actually pull out the win, and I, I, I feel like there were some elements in that game that they lost to themselves, but at the same time, I feel like NWT is a lot stronger than people give them credit for sometimes. They've got some really powerful players uh, that can just They're slip under the radar. They're definitely on the up and up, I think. Uh, they, they have a lot more to show, and as they integrate new players, it is going to be a lot more opportunities. But Civilock down here splitting and just kind of hanging out. He will be teleporting, but this this is it. Even if Think That I Can gets a miracle yep, smite. Look at that. We got the damage already starting to come yeah. out. Super Dashi is going to be the first one to fall, and unfortunately, Voltaic Penguin and then uh, the rest of the members of PWH are all that's left. Baron is going to be abandoned, game is going to be ended, uh, and we've only got Dr. Schmeckles left trying to do what he can to keep the minions off this last turret. I don't, uh, let's see here, we're going to see Utility Monster go in, focus on the turret, focus on the Nexus, and that is going to be an easy 28-minute win for the side of Universal Basic Income. A much quicker route to victory than TDE. Yeah. Um, also, Redhead. 12 kills that game. <laughs> yes, he did. There was a, a very dominant side to this game. We saw some opportunities for Pandas with Hatch to try and stall ball, but we said that there was going to be a lot of pressure on Voltaic Penguin at the beginning of the game, and unfortunately, the Lucian Nami, despite the fact that it found an early kill on Diabelle the Pony, just wasn't able to push through the rest of the game, and we see in classic UB fashion, give up three dragons, who cares? We're going to fight you better on the fourth one exactly it's all about that overall play and you're like look the, yes you can give up your queen to win a chess game so why it's not give up some drakes <laughs> exactly it's a sacrifice so why not give up some drakes in order to get some better uh pressure in other parts of the map uh not a lot to really break down on this one uh mm -hmm. so i think we're just gonna go ahead hop into that break stick around folks we'll be right back with a winner's interview with universal basic income
Hello folks, Chris Edgeworth here with our final interview of the night, and I am joined by not BBZ Red, but Yubi, Universal Basic Incomes, Trundle in the top lane. How you feeling, Red, after that win? Uh, bittersweet. I'm happy we won, but this was my one opportunity to play Lucian top, and they picked Lucian away from me, and I'm kind of sad about that. <laughs> Well, uh, I think that you had uh, quite a bit of just desserts in this game, so uh, better better luck uh, next time. Hopefully, uh, you'll get an opportunity to get let off the leash once again, because you're certainly uh, unchained in this game, regardless of whether or not you're able to get your hands on the Lucian. So um, let's talk about this draft. Um, so as you say, they get the Lucian away from you, um, decide that they want to int with it a little bit. Uh, sorry, Voltaic. No, uh, but uh, let's talk about the, uh, you ended up with the Trundle matchup into the Mordekaiser, which I thought was something that was really interesting. And not only that, it's something Joshi uh, noticed in the draft is you folks were very decisive with your lock-ins. So it yep. seems like this was uh, this was the play, this was the light, this was the way. Talk to me about prepping for this draft and what you folks uh, pulled out, what you're up against. Uh, I mean, we pretty much had a pick, in, a pick in mind for everything that they picked. You know, as soon as we saw the Mordekaiser, we knew we were picking Trundle. It's a really good matchup. Um, so, you know, we just, we, we pretty much knew exactly what we were going to pick down the line once they picked theirs. Yeah. And um, so uh, this game, uh, as it turned out, uh, you had the, uh, the back pocket, the Uno reverse card, so to speak, uh, to uh, show Dr. Smeckles uh, what exactly is going on, who might be uh, the top top laner, or making the uh, contention for top top laner in uh, FOF, if some people have uh, put on the mantle onto Dr. Smeckles. But it looks like, uh, you know, you had a little bit to say about that. Talk to me about the, the top diffy. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of to be expected. I love making the memes, but there's a pretty big uh, rank gap, which doesn't always necessarily translate in terms of skill. But um, I I think he I had the counter pick, I had the ignite, so I mean, it was to be expected that I win the lane. Yeah, it's there's not not many things that are more brutal uh, of a counter in the game than a trundle with ignite onto a champion that says binary and how they operate as Mordekaiser. Um, so uh, unfortunate uh, as you were early able to get many of those uh, solid pushes. And uh, not only that, uh, while you're getting these pushes out, um, he was dropping CS and you were doing an excellent job of collecting all the CS before you uh, started moving around or moving down to get vision or um, uh, getting down to the Herald and stuff. So I think you played exceptionally well in this, but there are some other people who might have a say on how this game went. And uh, this question comes to us from Joshi. Uh, how are you feeling about this uh, VOD review session coming up? Oh, man, you know, like, I'm really excited for him to criticize me at dropping CS. I missed quite a few after, like, I was perfect CS until, like, 45, and then I just dropped a ton. So, you know, he's going to criticize me on that. And then uh, I'm probably going to run it down to Zen Zen tomorrow. So he'll probably flame me on that one, too. You know hey you know if you're if you're expecting it you know maybe maybe that'll take some of the the pain away but uh probably not so uh hopefully hopefully you learn a lot um look forward to uh what the doctor has to say um to diagnose what went wrong, what went wrong in this beautiful win from universal basic income so uh congratulations to you red and congratulations to you B. before we step away though your opportunity for any final thoughts yeah, uh, just wanted to bring back the BBZ special from Season 3, the Trundle Top. And uh, shout out to NWT for uh, taking the first win off of us. Next time you don't get to hide your top laner behind R5 pick. <laughs> All right. Well, we look forward to that matchup again. Um, and uh, that is going to be it for our uh, final game of the night. We do have the start of the second round, Robin, coming at you tomorrow. 
same time so 4 30 pacific time coming at you with another set of four games for all of us here on the fof staff that make this all possible thank you to our viewers and to our players that make this all possible we look forward to spending tomorrow with you again have a good night